Welcome to the Spiritual Leadership Podcast with Pastor Paul Chapel, pastor of Lancaster Baptist Church and founder and president of West Coast Baptist College. Welcome to the Spiritual Leadership Podcast. I am super excited about today's edition. We have some great guests and we have a great topic. We're going to be talking today about the role of the Bible College in training the next generation of servant leaders. And uh, I'm glad to welcome with me today, Brother Toby England, who's the Chief Academic Officer here at West Coast Baptist College, and also Paul Choi, who's just joining our staff and leadership team, working as a liaison with the administration. Welcome to you both, and uh, thanks for sharing this time today. You know, several years ago, I was uh, visiting in the hills of Italy, and specifically uh, visiting the caves of the Waldensians. And I'd always heard about the Waldensians, their sacrifices. And, and uh, as we were there in the Italian Alps, we were uh, really interested in knowing the stories of their sacrifices, how they had come from France, uh, how they were simply seeking after really religious freedom. And I remember going into one large cave, and uh, as we walked in with the tour guide, uh, I said, what, what did they do here? Because there was like a stone table obviously dating back to the 1100s. And uh, he said, well, this is the school of the Barba. And I said, well, who were the Barba? And he said, well, that word means uncles or teachers. He said, we would never refer to our teacher as a father, only an uncle. I thought that was interesting. And he said, uh, this is where the older pastors would train the younger pastors. And then he said this, he said, sort of like a Bible college. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you look back into history and even back to the first century, you find that there were governors and tutors and obviously pastors and teachers always equipping the saints for the work of the ministry. And uh, as we come into this new era technologically, philosophically, uh, one might wonder, well, how does that continue? And I believe it must continue with great fervor in the days ahead as we have the same New Testament mission to train workers for the local church. You know, Paul said in 2 Timothy 2 and 2 to Timothy, the things that thou hast heard of me amongst many faithful witnesses, the same teach thou uh, to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. And I love the emphasis on the same. And that's what we want is a perpetuity or a continuity of truth. And I find it very humbling that that truth has been deposited, deposited into the local church. Right. And uh, as a local church-based Bible college, we truly believe we're simply fulfilling that great commission uh, each and every day here on the campus or through our online instruction. And so it's a real joy. Uh, but Toby, as the Chief Academic Officer, I'd like for you to talk a little bit today, not just about West Coast, although we have a bias in this podcast toward West Coast, and we'll admit that, but talk about uh, the program of West Coast as far as some of the majors, because we say it's a Bible college. Obviously, right. we're not trying to be all things to all men. We're not breaking into the liberal arts uh, programs, but we do have several offerings and uh, share some of the specific classes. As sure, well. sure. Pastor, I appreciate that. And I love the fact that the connection that we have with that ancient history and the same vehicle that God used hundreds mm. of years ago is what God's using today at West Coast Baptist College. Uh, everything that we do here on this campus for West Coast is directly tied into ministry, the outcomes that we've identified. So that looks like four primary programs in the undergraduate, then we have a graduate program as well. Mm. Uh, probably our core and our biggest enrollment is in our Bible department. That's where your pastoral emphasis, evangelism, missions, we're adding a counseling concentration to that, which is gonna be so helpful in the local yeah. church. We have an education major, and your education majors are really training for Christian school education. You've got secondary or primary. You have a visual arts program, which we're really excited about the visual arts program and have seen, as you said, technologically, as, as we try to do the same thing in this generation, that really involves some technology now. And we want to do it well. Mm -hmm. We want to do it with excellence. And there's not really a lot of excellent training in that area. And we God has brought together a program here mm -hmm. that is doing that in such a strong way. And then a music program as yes. well. Mm -hmm. In all of these, you can see just directly tied to the local church. And we know that because right. when we look at our alumni and when we talk to people who are hiring our alumni, mm -hmm. they're doing it and they're doing it well. And they're doing it in the context of local churches around the world. Well, 
Well, as you know, this, this past uh, month, we saw a tremendous uh, class go out into the harvest field, um, yeah. of which 100% uh, of them were placed in local church-based ministries and without debt because they didn't have student loans. We're really, really thankful for that. Now, when you, when you link back to the biblical mandate of training, what are some classes that excite you that, that speak to that issue of uh, the continuity of truth? Yes, sir. And I think it's easy to talk about the names of classes, Pastor. The names of classes can sound exciting, but really it's the mentoring that happens within that class. Right. It's the content being delivered within that class that really makes them excellent. Uh, some of the classes that I think are foundational to a student's ministry as they go out is we start with hermeneutics and we give we have multiple classes that are focused on a correct historical, grammatical, literal interpretation of the Word of God. We have apologetics courses. Uh, our introductory apologetics course has long time been a favorite of a lot of students. And really that's defending the Christian worldview. We have an increasingly hostile society that doesn't take a bias toward scripture. They don't take a bias toward the clergy and the community and the local churches, if anything, increasing hostility. And we have to be able to fulfill the mandate, to give an answer to every man that asks us a reason. You've got that in apologetics. Mm -hmm. Our counseling, as I've said, has been a, a popular class and a series of classes, now expanding that into an entire concentration. Um, and I think in different programs, you'll have different outstanding classes, but what we focus on is, correctly interpreting the Word of God, effectively delivering the Word of God, and thinking properly with the Christian worldview in mm -hmm. this generation, and, and overarching all of that in academics and in their practical experience, especially on campus, but even online, we embed that with uh, evangelism, soul winning, outreach, mm -hmm. discipleship, being incorporated into their local body. And for students here, they get a chance to do that at Lancaster Baptist Church. Which is really exciting to see that development firsthand. Now, as the chief academic officer, you know, you can lay out these uh, course descriptions and uh, these various different departments, but then there's a constant culture of assessment that we live with. Yes, and maybe share a little bit of your passion to help teachers become successful? Yes, sir. So one of the things that is the way we do that is we identify what do we try to do as a as a college? Uh, what do our graduates need to do? What's the heart? And we, we really divided that into three distinct realms and we call it the head, the heart, and the hands. Mm -hmm. So as students are here, we're training their head, we're helping them think well and think biblically. We're training their hands. They're skilled in areas of, of whatever their field is, music or their, their English grammar needs to be right or their ability to run a camera and do a live stream service, that's their hands. And their heart, that's the chapel and that's the, the heart of the instructors. And I'll be honest, it's the heart of the student body. Right. It's a, a spirit on campus of ministry and of, of dedication to the Lord. So how do I measure that? How do, we, how do we make sure that we're going in the right direction? So we've got these outcomes. Each program has, we call them learning outcomes. If you've ever taken a class at West Coast, at the beginning of the syllabus, you'll see there's a rubric and it outlines, okay, here's what we exist to do as a college. Here's how this class helps. And it hits these and everything that we do pastor has to align with that. Yep. If there's a class that doesn't align with our purpose, we don't teach it. Right. And if there's a class that's needed to fulfill our purpose, we develop it. And it all ties back to the mission that we have as a college. And you know, when you think about uh, head, heart, and hands, uh, I am passionate about the matter of the heart. In fact, uh, the first book that I wrote back in 1988 was entitled, A Heart for God. Uh, because when the heart is pure, the vision is clear. And I, I find this in college faculty and in any ministry environment, that uh, if the heart isn't right, uh, it's gonna come through in a sarcastic spirit, it's gonna come through in ill preparedness, it's gonna come through in some negative form. And uh, we see so often today on social media in particular, just uh, this passive aggressive sarcasm, cutting many times toward other ministries and so forth. Um, I certainly don't want any of that on the faculty of West Coast Baptist College. I wanna have godly uh, men and women who are without guile and without canker and without some issue. We have one issue, and that is to train the next generation with a godly spirit to reach their communities for Christ. And so. Honestly, I am super excited about this fall and, and what God is doing. We'll talk in a moment about some of the assembling of the team. 
Paul, I'm really glad to have you join our team and uh, super excited. I think you're just right at 40. Am I correct on that? Yes, 39. 39. Stay in, say 39. I'm 59. We'll hold right there for a while. <laughs> but uh, you know, Paul, uh, when you came as a student, um, God began to do a work in your heart. And uh, for some of those <clears throat> listening to the podcast today, uh, they may not know of, of your name. Uh, why don't you take a quick second here and just share your testimony, how you came to West Coast and uh, what God did uh, some years ago at that point in your life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, I came, uh, I came to West Coast back in 2003 to 2007. And uh, prior to that, I was studying to be an aerospace engineer at UCLA. And so growing up, uh, I always thought, you know what, I, I want to be wealthy and rich and uh, I want to make a lot of money. And I thought education would be the vehicle to lead me to that destination. And so I studied hard, uh, went to UCLA. But after that first year, I met a friend there that was involved in a business venture and uh, started doing pretty well for himself in the internet boom. And so I ended up withdrawing from UCLA that first year. I followed him into business, lived down on the East Coast for about two and a half years. And uh, at the end of that, I discovered that some of the leadership within that company was unethical in their practices. And so ended up withdrawing from that company. And uh, within that season of my life, um, there were certain situations that took place uh, that eventually led me to West Coast Baptist College. And, and that was one of the best decisions uh, that I ever made in my life because that first year at the Bible College, uh, I came under the preaching of God's Word. I remember chapel every single day and being convicted concerning my salvation. Uh, I grew up in a pastor's home um, and, and I heard the gospel many times. I made a profession of faith when I was nine years old, but, but I realized when I was in Bible College that first year, uh, that that was a, a superficial decision that I made. I didn't quite uh, properly comprehend the gospel at that time. And I remember that first year trusting Jesus Christ as my personal Amen. Savior. And then that second year, the Lord uh, called me to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and so I surrendered my life to, to that call that the Lord placed upon me. Uh, and then upon graduation, I went to go serve with my dad for seven years uh, as his assistant pastor, uh, pretty much doing everything from, from preaching to, to cleaning the toilets and, right. and uh, sweeping the floors. Uh, and then after seven years, the Lord opened the door for us to plant a church. And so we went on deputation at the beginning of 2014, and uh, we were able to fulfill uh, the need that we had within eight months. And then we started the Hillcrest Baptist Church about seven years ago on November 16th, 2014. And so- It's amazing how fast yes, that's gone by. Yes, sir. Absolutely. You know, Paul, when you think about your journey, uh, coming to West Coast, uh, working for your dad, who's a godly man that I greatly respect down in, in uh, Gardena, but, uh, then going into starting a church, and I know as you transition into college work, you're still in the church ministry at this college, but leaving the pastorate, so to speak, and uh, you're leaving a strong work there, and we're excited about the future for Hillcrest, and, and I want to commend you for what God has allowed you to do. But now that you look at that through the lens of someone who's been in the ministry a while, uh, what are you excited about when it comes to standing in the lectern and teaching or you know, answering the questions of an incoming 18 or 19 year old. What are some things you look forward to this next semester? Yes, sir. Uh, well, I'm very excited about equipping the next generation for, for the gospel ministry. I believe according to Ephesians chapter number four, uh, the Bible teaches us that the primary, one of the primary roles of a pastor is to perfect the saints for the work of the ministry. And there it's speaking about completely furnishing uh, the saints for the work of the ministry. Right. And so with that in mind, I believe that a pastor to be successful needs to be equipped themselves. Uh, right. They mm -hmm. need to be trained themselves uh, theologically uh, when it comes to the foundational doctrines of the Word of God uh, in the areas of apologetics when it comes to defending the faith and articulating their position uh, when it comes to their biblical doctrines. And so with that in mind, I believe there's a great need for this next generation, especially with all the all the cultural challenges that we're facing yeah. today, uh, whether that might be the, the uh, abortion movement or whether that might be the social issues, um, they need to know where they stand when it comes to the doctrines and how they can defend their position. And so I'm excited to help in that training process for right. these students. Well, I, I want you both to know that, you know, when I look ahead to the next few months, uh, something that kind of gets my juices going is just uh, working with you guys in the Bible College ministry. And I know Dr. Gatch, Dr. R, Dr. Shetler, others <clears throat> feel the same way. Uh, we're excited about the future of West okay. Coast. And uh, I want you to know as well that uh, we share that passion when we look out at this generation as a pastor, what they're facing, uh, critical race theory, which is 
reverse discrimination, as you mentioned, abortion, the LBGTQ takeover of the corporate America and left side of the politics, and all of that kind of coming together to see the Black Lives Matter movement uh, come alongside of Hamas and endorse the actions of Hamas against Israel. Uh, so we have a very different worldview that comes from the Bible, and our students need to have strong convictions, and, uh, and I think that you all are, are really placed well to help prepare. And you know, <clears throat> we have about 3,000 graduates, and I'm thankful that the vast majority of them are just standing true to the fundamentals of the Word and faithfully preaching God's Word. And so, Paul, we welcome you. We're excited about this ministry uh, that God has given us together. Now, Toby, when you look at the academic side, I want to come back to that because sometimes people think, oh, Bible college, you know, and they think a local church Bible college that we mostly major in, you know, how to pass bubble gum to bus kids. And we, we are unashamedly, by the way, running buses at Lancaster Baptist. I, I don't, uh, I don't uh, diminish the value of bus ministry. My wife was saved through bus ministry. So we involve the kids in bus ministry and we teach them how to, how to encourage the riders. But some people just think that it's all practical. And I want you to speak for just a moment about some of the academic rigors and uh, both from the standpoint of uh, evaluating faculty and training faculty, uh, as well as the examinations of the students and uh, what we do to maintain that integrity. Sure, and Pastor, I think part of that, or big part of that, is the team that you've assembled. I think the people that we have in the classroom are uh, not only passionate about what we do here at Lancaster Baptist Church, but also experts in their field. And that really is what you want to right. learn from in the faculty uh, that's leading these classes. And we have uh, terrific, uh, team of people that work here. Right, and if I may interject, I think 25% of the class is taught by someone with a terminal degree. Every class taught by someone with a master's in their subject. And some of the new additions, besides Brother Choi, we're excited about some of the online with Dr. Stevens, Dr. Ivy, and others yes, that sir. are coming into the, in the classroom. And you're right, uh, in the early days of an organization, you hire someone who maybe is not always working according to their proficiency. Right. But we have solid men and women in these classes. I think of Dr. Debbie Demersion over the academics of the Terrific. English program. But, yeah. but go ahead and share a little bit about some of the people, some of the program, and some of the goals we have. So what we've seen is that grow. I don't think that you would say, you know, 20 years ago we were there in all of those areas, right. but God's continued to grow us and the trajectory is, while our passion, our heart, our mission is, is the same, we're not doing less of it, we're doing more of it, we're doing it better. Mm -hmm. And I know when our graduates go out, we want them to be prepared uh, in wherever the Lord takes them. If God puts them right in the middle of a college town. I was with one of our alumni uh, about last year and we were doing a conference or a, a meeting and he was in a college town. He had people from this secular university and then he had open mic session at the end. <laughs> he was like, hey, let's ask some questions. And you know what, our students are gonna have that more and more and more. Right. So uh, how do we prepare for that? Well, we do that by developing our faculty, by making sure that we have uh, the best people possible in the classroom. So we do, as you said, we have 25% of our classes taught by terminal degree. That's generally gonna be a doctorate. Uh, uh, and those are, uh, doctorates that are uh, rigorous and that brings that, and that helps us internally with staff mentoring. Right. So we have people that are coming in that may be new to teaching. They're gonna be able to sit under somebody that's an expert. Uh, all of our teachers have to have earned masters uh, that are recognized masters in their field. And you know what that's done? That's helped us give a better product. Mm -hmm. uh, it would be easier to not do that, wouldn't it? Sure. Mm -hmm. It'd be sure. easier to not be pay cheaper. for the degrees. It'd be easier because a lot of these people we're not bringing in because we saw mm -hmm. them, you know, an ad in the newspaper. Right. These really, for the most part, are people that are already recognized as having the chemistry, the mm -hmm. commitment to the mission. And then we've added to that a layer of excellence. Mm -hmm. um, you said something about assessment. We see that as students leave, they get a test on Bible knowledge when they enter. They have a test on Bible knowledge when they yeah. leave. And that's not really a test for them, Pastor. That's, that's a for, test us. for us. <laughs> and you know, a lot of times, uh, because we do the oral examinations for the preachers, uh, I've been told by dozens of pastors who've sat on the ordaining councils, these guys knew their stuff. And it's because we test them specifically on doctrine. Uh, we want them to be able to rightly divide the word of truth. We want them to be committed Baptists. We want them to know our Baptist history. We want them to know the distinctives of our Baptist uh, convictions, whether it's eternal security, whether it's uh, dealing with Bible authority only and, and so forth. So uh, that's important. Um, I do believe that uh, becoming accredited with TRAC some years ago now, 
uh, helped us, but we were questing already for uh, excellence in these areas, and uh, I'm thankful that now we have some peer review. And I'm not—I've never been afraid of peer review. Uh, there's no government control on us because we're with right. an accrediting body. We could pull out of that in a moment's notice. But what it does provide for us in this LBGTQ environment is some solidification with like-minded institutions on some of these issues that threaten our religious liberty provides some, some legal uh, companionship there, but also it provides peer review where people are able to come and observe us from the outside. And, and there's been an iron sharpening iron there, and uh, I'm very thankful for it. Uh, we have uh, remained committed, and, it, and one of the biggest challenges for me in bringing guys on board and gals on board with our team has been, we want folks that do love the bus ministry, we want folks that are Baptist, that do have a soul winning time, who love the TR and, and, and use and respect uh, the King James Version and thank the Lord for the preserved word. And all of these things together comprise someone that is academically, spiritually, and scripturally able to equip. Uh, we don't want people who are uh, belittling soul winning or belittling uh, the TR or belittling holy living. Uh, in such, we say, a Bible college should be a place where People are being encouraged to revere God, God's word, the Christian life, the local church has a holy life. And back to what you said at the very beginning, the faculty matters mm -hmm. and uh, people that stand behind the lecterns. And so uh, I really appreciate that. Now, with respect to some of our benchmarks though, with tracks in particular, uh, Toby, you, one of your jobs is to gear us up for those assessment times. Why don't you give us that schedule a little bit? So really those uh, benchmarks, those studies, aren't something that we all of a sudden scramble to get ready for. It's just a uh, team coming in and peeking in on what we're already doing. So we right. have these ongoing systems. I'll mention a couple. Uh, we, every year, are looking at every class and we're assessing how well does that class line up with the outcomes. Right. And the chairs of the departments are really over that. Dr. Demergent right. in the uh, education department, uh, Rick Houck and others, he'd be in the Bible. So we're looking at how well are we doing? We do a program review on a cycle and that's where the faculty get involved. And we really, we take a sample of student work and we just grade that on our rubric and ask how well did we accomplish? You talked about Baptist distinctives. Well, that's one of our outcomes. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, how we can't just hope that they do that. We've right. got to give them reasons. We've got to right. train them, tell them what that is. So uh, we do that assessment and that's something that's ongoing. Um, so when a team comes and we'll have a team here in a couple of years and they'll come in, they're not going to look at something that we just created for them. Like right. We baked you a cake. What right. they're doing is they're coming in, they're just peeking in on a process. And, and sometimes we talk about a culture of assessment, right. but really it's more than a culture of assessment pastor. It's a culture of excellence mm -hmm. yeah. because that assessment is to lead us to identify, you know what? We didn't do as good as we can here. And sometimes, sometimes it hurts. Yeah. yeah. But, but because we're constantly involved in that, uh, that ongoing we're process. keeping right. Now you got to see firsthand some of the fruit of the college recently. You took a group of students to Nicaragua. Uh, I remember taking some students there for the first time. It's a very poor country. Yeah. And uh, we have a graduate there. And uh, just uh, tell us a little bit, because sometimes people will call me and go, do you know you have a graduate that did this or such? And I'm like, yeah, and you probably have some from the college you went to. You might even have some in your family, but thanks for the call. <laughs> so we already know we have some graduates that don't do it the way we teach necessarily. Uh, and that's between them and the Lord. But but again, the majority are taking the model that they're getting at Lancaster Baptist and West Coast Baptist and going out. And you saw that in a special way in Nicaragua. And I want you to tell us about that. So it was the Portillos that we were with, special yeah. family. Uh, as you said, alumni here from the college, his wife attended here as well. And there were so many things just on a personal level. I'm always excited to introduce students to that mm -hmm. setting and to get them, allow them to see. Sometimes it's the poverty. Sometimes it's the opportunity for ministry. Sometimes it's the openness. Sometimes it's they've never been in a socialistic or near communistic country right. and just the, the contrast. Uh, so we stayed for 10 days in a hotel, nicest in the area there in Lyon, one of the nicer ones. And but nicest have, in the area. It is... didn't have hot water. No. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, it, yeah. you know, it had the critters running under the door yeah. sometimes. That's just what it was yeah. because of where we were. But you know what impacted me, Pastor, and every student on that trip, I think it was a catalyst uh, about two weeks in their life, is the joy and the authenticity of the Portillos. Uh, they don't feel like there's nowhere else in the world they want to be. 
Uh, there's nothing else they'd rather do. And, and you know the, the inside story on this. They stayed through the protests a couple years ago. He had people running in front of his home with fully automatic weapons. And, you know, at those moments you question, do I have my family in the right place? Yet they hmm. really felt like this is where God had them. Okay. And uh, they, the work that they're doing is just incredible. The number of nationals that showed up for soul winning, uh, it's just it's strong, it's passionate. And the missionaries themselves, the Portillos, they have that authenticity, the joy. Mm. Um, it was a complete reset on so many years of, yeah. of life. And for me, as faculty, it made me want to come back and do it again. Yeah, oh, doesn't it? Yeah, when you see the fruit of the labor that way. And uh, I know the Portillos are building a building. I think they're running two, 300 already on Sundays. And so it's, that's really the fruit. I told Dr. Rasmussen years ago, uh, when he came, I said, look, our goal is not to build the college number attendance wise. Our goal is to send out laborers. You know, that's what it's all about. And so praise God for that. Paul, you're going to be working a lot with our alumni. <clears throat> and I know that <clears throat> having been out uh, as a graduate, there's a need sometimes for encouragement, uh, maybe for special events with like-minded alumni. Uh, tell me a little bit about uh, what you believe will be a blessing for the alumni in the days ahead and uh, some things you look forward to doing as far as encouraging that. Well, I, I think one of the greatest encouragements for me as an alumni when I was serving as a pastor uh, was the spiritual leadership conference that came up every mm -hmm. single year. And so I know the next one's coming up here in October the 3rd through the 5th. Right. And uh, just a time to be inspired from the preaching of God's Word and uh, also from the music during that time. Uh, but then also the, the fellowship is so encouraging. I think sometimes when we're serving in the ministry, we can kind of get uh, what some people call the Elijah syndrome, where we feel like we're the only one out there serving the Lord and where's everybody else? Yeah. Uh, but then we come to a spiritual leadership conference and we have some alumni gatherings together and we realize, hey, there's a lot of us out there pressing forward in the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And so it's extremely encouraging. Uh, and then of course, it's very equipping. Uh, as we think about the, the sessions, it's very pertinent and practical. And uh, I could always remember taking back those principles, applying it to the ministry uh, right away mm -hmm. and uh, seeing how the Lord works in that fashion. And so that's always been a huge encouragement to me. Well, our national alumni meeting is always on the Tuesday of Spiritual Leadership Conference. And we certainly want to invite every one of the alumni to be a part of that. And then of course, Paul, as you uh, get to know more and more of the alumni, uh, I'm excited about just keeping a little better track of where they are, what they're doing, and I know you're gonna be a great encouragement to them. And uh, we're excited that you and your wife and family are here. Yeah. Uh, I do wanna just take uh, this moment as well, <clears throat> just, to, just to maybe uh, summarize some of this discussion today about mm -hmm. local church Bible college, about training labors for the harvest, to say that Jesus Christ, our Savior, had one prayer request. Mm -hmm. And you guys know what it was. He said, pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth labors into his harvest. And the mission of Lancaster Baptist is training labors for the harvest and of West Coast Baptist College, training labors for the harvest. That's what it's all about, is, is getting more people out into that harvest field. And I do wanna encourage our friends that are watching today and listening, pray for labors. And uh, if you know of someone, it doesn't matter if they're 18 or 48, if God's calling them to ministry, West Coast Baptist College, is ready for them. If it's someone in their 40s, they may want the online program. We're very excited about the growth of the online program and the accountability to the home pastor and so forth. But whatever the venue, the educational process is honed, it's ready, it's conservative, it's baptistic, it's for someone that wants to make a difference in our Baptist churches today, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so let me encourage uh, you men, and thank you for the work you're doing. Let me encourage our listeners uh, that Bible college is vital in training the next generation. Pray for us, visit us. We look forward to seeing many of you October the 2nd through the 5th at the Spiritual Leadership Conference. Fellas, thanks for joining with me today. Until our next podcast, we'll be praying for you as well. We trust you enjoyed this episode of Spiritual Leadership Podcast. If there's a question or topic you would like Pastor Chapel to address in future episodes, send an email to qa at lancasterbaptist.org.